R A H one two three six. Um, he said that um, he's not too familiar with FTC, but shuttling bots seem like a solid strat if you're competing in an area that's not as competitive, um, especially if you can just dump stones onto the foundation without worrying too much about stacking. So I will agree with this, but I'll actually take it a little uh, uh, one step further. Um, I, I, I do agree that it'll be effective in non-competitive states and non-competitive regions um, where dumping is a valid strategy. But I also do think that, as we saw in some of the videos, um, it's a very co competitive strategy even in competitive regions because it. I personally believe that the field this year is too small for two robots to effectively be simultaneously oh, completing the scoring tasks. Mm -hmm. In addition to this, the way that this game is scored is also non-conducive, in my opinion, to multiple multiple robots simultaneously scoring because the tower bonus only goes to the tallest tower and that's a significant mm -hmm. bonus because of these two things i think that a shuttling robot can be seen everywhere even i'm gonna say i'm gonna we're gonna see shuttling robots in alliances at worlds um that's where i'm going with this but um but i totally agree with your comment that it is a very viable strategy I'm actually going to have to slightly disagree. I think that shuttling robots <laughs> is a good strategy on some end because it allows you to have some really fast cycle times and you can get a lot more stones on there. Sure, but I think that a lot of the points do come in the end game when you're capping. So I feel like if you're only shuttling, then it could be a little bit bad for your strategy because you might not have that super huge capping bonus that other alliances might get. So I think it does put you at a little bit of a disadvantage on that end. But capping... Uh, Shuttling stones could be a decent strategy, maybe in early game. I don't think it would be go too far through end game. I mean, through the um, end of the season. I mean, You're I kind of, I kind of agree with Shashir on this one. I mean, like I think right now shuttling robots aren't like as as good as they can be. But later in the season, when we see teams with just rapid intakes and really light robots because they don't worry about like lift systems or anything like that, uh, they'll just be like dumping stones in and out, in and out. And I think that'll be really effective if teams have uh, fast lift mechanisms on the other on the other side of the field. I think that's a good way to put it. Um, yeah. But I I I do um, I will admit that I didn't actually think about that capping thing um, that much. So that's a valid compo that's a valid component of a score, and it's a very large component of a score as well. So it's a very oh, very yeah. good point. And especially this year, you can see a lot of the scoring is really heavily like devoted to some certain aspects. So, for example, capping. Capping itself is two points per level and then five points just for capping it. So that can easily get you like, you know, 20, 40 points just for capping the, uh, the capstone. And then another aspect is, you know, the autonomous where just two sky stones will get you 20 points. So mm -hmm. I think some of those smaller things can get you a lot of points, which I think mm -hmm. scoring wise, teams should focus a little bit more on this, like maximizing their score. Absolutely. So we got another comment from Jack H eight seven eight eight, which says that also while it wouldn't warrant any additional points, or while it would warrant no additional points, if a team stacks multi-block during auto, that would give them a major advantage going into driver controlled, where matches may start to get much tighter. I do agree with that. I think that that this is like the um, if we go back to FRC in twenty eighteen um, with the uh, power up with the blocks and the time based scoring, right? Um, Technically, one block on the on the tall scale um, or on the tall whatever it was called um, would give you the same amount of points as four blocks on that same scoring element. But the four blocks would allow for um, a more effective teleop, and it would allow you to maintain control. I think that a similar principle um, comes in 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 this year's game, as that yes, you may not get more points per se. Um, just for that specific scoring action, but in the overall um, in the overall scope of the match, it will help you greatly. Um, I'm kind of uh, on the other side of the argument on this, and I think like just uh, taking the stones in auto and then putting them on the, on the other side and not even placing them on the foundation uh, is extremely valuable. And the reason being, like as this year you've mentioned previously, is like the field is really cramped this year. And by clearing out like those, I mean maybe it won't be six, but let's just say four or five stones, is you open up a lot of space for the other robots to just drive around and maximize their scores. And another thing, having stones there uh, at the beginning of teleop and end of auto really improves your cycle time. So I'm not sure like how much time you would really uh, gain by having them already on the stack and then being detrimented by having to navigate around or through them during teleop. Yeah, that's actually a really valid point because when robots are moving around the field, because mm -hmm. of that limited space and that you know that super long travel distance between mm -hmm. the foundation and the um, the depot where you'd be picking up mm -hmm. the stones, 
uh, because of that super long distance, it, it, it's sometimes advantageous when you have stone sitting there uh, waiting for you, like super close to your foundation. So it makes it for a lot quicker cycle times with, for your first few uh, stones. So I think that can be um, that can give you some, some advantages in some scenarios. So yeah, it's an interesting point. RAH1236 uh, says, aggressive defense of pushing another robot into the defender's depot would be whack. Um, I do I, I do find this point interesting. I think there may be some times where the referees see this and may count it as like egregious behavior or something like that. But I mean, I would think I'd probably have to see it first to see how it plays out and then Yeah, no, that that would be it. a G twenty nine like I believe it is G twenty nine. I think that's the that's a specific rule, but um but mm -hmm. don't quote me on that. But that rule will be will be called every time if that happens because um if it is because if a robot is um if if a robot does that with the intention of getting penalties, accruing penalties, right. um, that'll uh, be advantageous to them, they're misusing the the game, essentially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah, there's a rule that says you can't force the other lions to accrue a penalty, so I think that was the right. one you're on. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, I think that I, I didn't quote the right rule, but that's yeah. the yeah. rule I was referencing. Egregious behavior yeah. is G28 this year, but mm. I mean, yeah, like you're definitely on point with your, uh, with your comment, uh, Shashir. Yeah. Uh, Jack H eight seven eight eight asks, "What do you guys think about the variety in capping mechanisms?" Yo, so this is a great question. Yes. I personally love the variety of capping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. They're basically so I see it in two different ways. I see the teams who who don't have it on their robot, right? Like that have to go and physically pick up their capping mechanism, and mm -hmm. teams that have it on their robot. And I'm gonna say this right now: the teams that have it on their robot, it's they they have the advantage right now because yeah. you're 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 preventing an entire trip you're preventing an entire cycle because you can have your capstone and your stone in your robot simultaneously that that's yeah. like something that if any team that takes advantage of that is i think in a significantly better place than a team that doesn't and yeah. actually on that uh, one quick note is teams might not necessarily have to take an extra trip because if team can start with the, their capping their capstone on mm -hmm. their robot and maybe just spit it out right in front of their foundation at the start, as you've seen some teams doing so far, um, I think that that could also be another like interesting strategy in case teams don't have space on the robot because teams could like instantly right before they you know uh, move the foundation out and then park, they could quickly just you know intake it back and then stack it up. But I think you are right in the sense that uh, starting a capstone on the robot is definitely more advantageous. Yeah. And uh, I, I just want to build on that. Like, I think we will definitely see by worlds, maybe 90%, if not all of the teams will have their capstones starting on their robot. Uh, yes, for the reason, Shashir, you said that like it dramatically reduces uh, your cycle time because you just lose one cycle. But also another thing is you could cap one level higher because something teams have been doing right now is that they've just oh, been making their yeah. capstone yeah. just like a mini stone. And so, like, the capstone can, like, only cap, like, one uh, – actually, they can, like, only build one less than, like, their lift max because they still have to put mm -hmm. the capstone on. But right. if you have your capstone go on top of the stone, you can get that one extra level, which is actually five points. Like, it's not just one point or two points. Like, that's five whole points in this year's game. That's actually a really, really interesting concept. I hadn't, mm -hmm. I hadn't thought about that, actually. Neither had that I. This is an amazing point. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, another thing I want to mention, going back to um, RAH1236's question about defense, I think another really interesting thing about defense, and I'm looking forward to seeing this year, is that when teams are going for their depot and going for the stone in their depot, they're actually like making a cross path with their the opposing lines, which yeah. is going for their depot. Yeah. So I think that's kind of interesting that if you if you're like going slow in that area, then aren't you sort of suddenly playing some defense because you're blocking off the team that's coming from the other side? So that's like yeah. interesting. How will those two alliances sort of cross paths with each other? That's you know, this really reminds me of 724's um, like offensive defense that they played in um, in Relic Recovery. Yeah, basically Hydra, every time. In, well. Yeah, Hydra also yeah. did this, right? Yeah. Every cycle, you spend some time in the glyph pit mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you knock the other your opponents off of their cycle times, right? Yeah. Um, I think that that's like that's a very very key defensive it was element so good. it was it was, it so was very well. good i uh, personally i felt it was very annoying because i was on yeah. the other side of that <laughs> but uh, no but like totally i to i really do see that happening this yeah. year and i think that that's a very effective way of using the field using the tightness of the field to your advantage from um from jack age 8788 we have a question. What would you guys say to the suggestion of a wheel claw hybrid intake 
uh, a, uh, a la Robo Wrangler slash Cheesy Poof Power Up. Given the one block limit, a continuous scoring system might no longer be such a dominant strategy. So I think you bring up a very interesting point. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally, um, so for me right now, the way that I see it, um, the I um, there are two different ways. So the Robo Wranglers in 2018, um, they did not outtake out the back of their robot. They physically did a 180 and then they outtook. Um, whereas um, uh, the Cheesy Poofs did were able to outtake out the back of their robot, so they didn't have to make those turns. Um, so the Cheesy Poofs design, I'll say, is very complicated. And basically having a clamp, I don't think is that efficient this year just because of how simple it is to actually intake the blocks altogether, mm-hmm. right? Um, in... in the FRC, basically the, the ratio of the scoring element to the robot size was way different than it is for FTC. So mm-hmm. in FRC, it would have been really hard to bring the bring the really hard and really inefficient to bring the scoring element all the way in, um, which is why um, I think that it, it isn't going to be such a dominant strategy here in FTC. In FRC, it really did work because you didn't need that block in your robot. You just needed it to be manipulated by your arm. Um, But here you sort of I think that a lot of teams are going with a second arm um, and that makes it more efficient because they're able to sort of do things simultaneously. Um, So I think that personally, I don't think that that's going to be such a dominant design strategy. I mean, I think you covered all the points on that this year. I have nothing to add on that. I actually have Um, I actually have one thing to add on that. So having being able to score out of the back of your robot this year compared to mm -hmm. scoring out of your front robot is actually way more better to score out of the back Mm -hmm. of your robot because Mm -hmm. If you see the field, right, you're you're intaking it from, let's say, the front of your robot, and when you outtake, you, instead of having to sort of make that 180 degree turn, which will lose you a lot of time, mm-hmm. and then sort of running to the foundation, you could mm-hmm. just move backwards, sort of, um, and score it right out of the back of your robot. And I think that one or two seconds it takes to make that 180 degree turn, saving mm-hmm. that every single cycle could add up to maybe get you two or three more cycles. And I think in this game. Every single second that you can squeeze out of a cycle is really important, especially due to that long distance that you have to like run between cycles. I think squeezing that one second out is really important. So it would be definitely be better to score out of the back of your robot compared to scoring out of the front of your robot. I mean, in Relic Recovery, we saw that same thing. Like with Claw Bots, the biggest thing was having to turn around in that short distance mm-hmm. between the Crypto Box and the Glyph Pit. Like it really did add up in the cycles, and that is the main reason. Like, or not the main reason, but one of the big reasons that they were sl- slower than uh, just Dump Truck style bots. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So we got uh, a comment from 14615 Turbocharged FTC. Um, apparently, they've done a 101 point match solo with a nine high stack. Uh, kudos to you guys. That's actually very, very yeah, impressive. That is this early very impressive. Yeah. Um, I can't are wait to happen. see what's coming out from uh, coming from your guys' end. Be sure to drop some videos. I I, sh- I, I know that you guys have already. <laughs> Be sure to continue dropping videos as we continue with our region recaps. We'd love to see it on our yeah. Discord. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. moving forward with the uh, with the comments in the chat, uh, we got a question from Jose Bobelli. Um, who said? Who was asking? Do you think that auto towards champs will be one bot doing most all the scoring? That's actually oh. a really interesting concept because mm-hmm. in autonomous, since there are only two sky stones, there's a little bit of trouble coordinating between the two robots, especially if you guys you know aren't pre-planning your autonomouses. Because when if both robots are going for those sky stones and you know they see the same sky stone at the same time that could mess up a lot of stuff so that's that's actually an interesting question um one thing i think with this is i don't think during qualification matches we'll see too much of that unless like i know some teams they're able to pa- uh, plan their paths out like uh virtually like on their computers and things and uh with a dometry implementation they can just first time they run it it'll be like really really solid and almost perfect so you can create new auto paths really quickly i think teams like that will be able to uh create like two team autos um and then definitely during like finals matches, like alliance matches, we will see two team autos. But like towards champs and like during qualification matches, I wouldn't see we would. Uh, I I don't think we'll see too too much of um, two team autos and more. As Jose Bobelli said, just one bot doing most or all of the scoring. I completely agree with that. We already see some very dominant teams doing everything or doing a lot. I'm not going to say everything, but because auto technically has a very, very high cap right now. But um, 
I see like teams doing so much. One, a single team, right? And then the mm-hmm. other team, all they have to do is park. All they have to do yeah. is stay out of the way yeah. and park on the line. And I yeah. think that that's a very so we we used to remember last year we were talking so much about auto paths, right? That was a huge thing. I think that this year's auto path is one robot doing a bunch of stuff on like both sides of the field and the other robot uh, sitting neatly in the corner to stay out of the way as much as possible. I, I, I mean, I think that that's just, I personally agree with Jose Bobelli and I would agree. I, I feel like that's the most effective way that auto will be taken. All right. Uh, Jack H8788 said, eventually teams will have to start stacking two by two. And that's the only way 15 plus will be possible. Uh, when do you think we'll start seeing this? Uh, one thing with this is the, if you stack two by two, uh, stacking 15 plus blocks, that would be like 30 blocks at least. I think that is a really, really high target by teams currently. So I'm not sure if we would see... 15, I think like 15 will be the cap this year. Like, I think maybe teams like will get a couple higher, but I really don't see much higher than 15 uh, this I, year. I actually have to disagree with you on that. I think that mm-hmm. another interesting strategy that we might see emerging is mm-hmm. maybe if teams can get 20 cycles, let's say, rather mm-hmm. than doing all 20 in like a two by two form and stacking 10 mm-hmm. high, they mm-hmm. could instead just get like the first like six or seven in a two oh, by yeah, two, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, stacking definitely. one, so that could get them yeah. a lot of that mm-hmm. height while also building mm-hmm. them a strong base of their stack. Mm-hmm. So that's also an interesting thing that I don't think we're even close to the what we'll see at Worlds because right now we're seeing you know nine, ten stacks um, at the top of the leaderboards, but I think as we get closer, like in March and April, we will see a lot of really tall stacks, like up going up to twenty five, thirty tall. So I'm really five thirty. Dang, I'm, okay. I'm 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 pretty eager to see some really tall tack, really tall. Tack. That's that's a bold claim. Um, sure, I do have another okay. perspective to bring on this. So mm-hmm. essentially, for a two by two to be effective, you can't. I I personally believe that while the you can't just have two parallel stacks going up, right? You have to have it interlocking. Yeah. I personally believe that interlocking is the way to yeah. go if you're doing a two by two. Yeah, but yeah, interlocking yeah. means a team will have to be able to place in both the Slip. vertical yeah. orientation oh, yeah. and the mm-hmm. horizontal orientation, which I literally I've only seen one team. Like honestly, like uh, I I don't like I, I I haven't seen any of the top teams that are like scoring super high right now. I haven't seen them have that functionality, have that capability. Um, so I think that that's um, that's another aspect of it. You're Actually, gonna have circuit breakers. Things- yeah, circuit breakers, while they do have that rotating motion, I think that they are able to rotate it to 90 degrees rather than rotate it to 180 and sort of get that perpendicular stacking component. Absolutely. See, they circuit breakers and my old, my, team, my old team revamped, uh, those are the only two teams I personally have seen so far that have the capability of placing the blocks in both of those orientations. Um, I, but there are a lot of other really high-scoring teams that I haven't seen being able to do that. We'll see if they decide to change their design so drastically or if they choose to um, play the game that they've, they've yeah. sort of planned out their season going towards. Another uh, note on that. Sure. One mm-hmm. thing is, uh, we have actually five teams at our school this year, and two out of the five teams they are able to rotate the blocks ninety oh, or one eighty. Right, but like, right. they aren't like they aren't getting like you know the nine high, eight high uh, that like circuit breakers and revamped and like all these crazy teams are getting. But they are able to do that, and like it has proven effective in some matches, definitely. Absolutely. So and, that's a good. That's a good. Mm-hmm. So I think another thing on that is that when teams are able to go in both orientations, I don't think we've seen that that much so far because it's not really necessary. I think when we get later on into the season, it'll be necessary as we get to those super high tall stacks with really fast cycles. So that's something to look out for. From Jack H 8788 um, what do you think of the idea um, of a world's auto strategy of foundation and two stones and two sky stones and two stones? <laughs> I feel like one team getting a six-block auto will be inc- incredibly difficult, even for teams like uh, GDBRT and Gluten Free. Um, so I think that it'll be hard to uh, maneuver robot. I believe that what you're saying is two, uh, both robots are, do- are shuttling stones during autonomous. I believe that this will be hard. It could be possible with very, very advanced teams, uh, but I do not think it'll be very popular. I, I mean, um, I, I just don't, but I, I think that it could happen. 
Uh, the biggest problem with this, in my opinion, is how does the other team know where the Sky Stone is? Because the thing is, in order to detect the Sky Stone, either you have to look at the first set of three or the second set of three. And looking at the first set of three, like closer to the wall, is like, because you can't place your robot in the opposing lines as depot. So like, how are you supposed to get a view of that? So either team will have to do it on the go, which is then uh, getting in, like getting in the path of like the other team, or like they'll have to figure some other strategy out. And I think like that's probably going to be like one of the bigger issues uh, with this strategy. And yeah. also, there's always that thing of like you know where is the foundation? Are we 100% sh sure that you know uh, uh, giant diencephalic brainstem? Like, did they put it in the right place, or did gluten free put it in the right place, or like whatever top team is doing this? Like, are we 100% sure that the foundation is actually where it's supposed to be? You know, uh, Shashir, you were talking earlier about like the difference between theory and application in FTC, and this is definitely one of those points. Absolutely. So the next question we have is from Xander Freemaker. Uh, he's asking, have you seen any towers tall enough to fall over yet? So that's actually an interesting point. Towers don't necessarily have to be tall. They rather just have to be unsta unstable. So if a team is moving it in, in the end game, no matter how tall it is, it could only be like three or four stones tall, but it can still fall over. And I saw that a lot at the Virginia qualifier um, that happened a few weeks ago um, yeah. that I was at in person. So I saw a lot of teams like, even though they're scoring only like you know four, five, six stones tall, which is rel like which is tall, but it's not that tall. And mm -hmm. those team like those stacks, they were falling over even when teams are trying to like move their foundation out, yeah. or like let's say like a team has like a, a set of slides that were just like swinging around or something. Anything can happen, so it's really, really you have to be really, really careful when you're near that foundation. Absolutely, yeah. I just say here in Georgia, I've seen a three stack fall because the team just they they they're, they're not very careful with it. So I mm -hmm. absolutely think that we have seen it tall enough to fall, but I do believe that the metric is very low for it to be able to mm -hmm. fall. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.